All right, so now, so now you've got resolution refutation proving down. Let's do uh, Fruchter logic, which is way more fun. Actually expressive, you can say stuff. Invented by this guy Frege, uh, who I mentioned before. Totally smart guy, got his PhD when he was 25. Um, he called it whatever this is in German, Begriff Schrift, uh, which is concept script, a formula language modeled on that of arithmetic of pure thought. Um, cool idea, very cool idea. Uh, we could write everything down and then just do, just do mechanistic syntactic transformations, just like we do in addition in arithmetic, to derive new true new truths. Um, very nice idea. Um, so he invented first order logic. Now first order logic is more complicated than propositional logic. Propositional logic they're just propositions and connectives. And I guess is negation a connective? I don't know. It's negation. In uh, first order logic, we have multiple kinds of things. We don't just have true false. Um, uh, we've got things and relations. So there is a, this is a sentence in first order logic. Um, this is called for all. For all person, it is raining implies is wet person. Is wet is not a function, it is a predicate. Now, how do you tell that that's a function and not a predicate? Well, um, a function, so, so in the logic there are things, there are constants, which um, I guess I'm going to capitalize. Um, so like John is a constant and chair 23 is a constant. A function takes a thing to a thing. So like mother of John, is a thing. A predicate takes things to bools, like is wet John. That's either true or false. Okay, everyone get the difference here between a function that takes a thing to another thing, and a predicate that takes a thing to a bool. Um, so is sitting on mother of John chair twenty three. That's actually a valid sentence in first order logic consisting of a predicate and a function and a constant and a constant. Okay, everyone parsing this correctly? Then plus on top of that we got all the usual connectives. So we can say is wet John or is sitting on mother of John tw chair 23. Okay, now why do I love first order logic? It's because of these folks right here called quantifiers. There are two of them. There's, there's for all and there's, there exists, all right? And that lets us say general statements, like for all person is wet person. That means like everybody's wet. And that's really handy with just one short little thing. I can just say something about everyone. It's extremely handy. Um, yeah, it's just great. W propositional logic is not very combinatorial because you've got this atomic propositions, like it is raining, that you can't break apart and look inside of. Whereas in first order logic, you can say things like, um, there exists an event where the type of event is a raining event, and the time of the event was 12 o'clock, and um, the day of the event was either Sunday or Monday. Like you can say that all about the event. And then if you learn something new about the event, you just add it to your knowledge base. Oh, you just sigh of relief after going, coming out of the arid desert of propositional logic. Um, so we've got all these cool things going on. Constants, predicates, variables, quantifiers, functions, and connectives. Anyone know why first order logic is called first order? I think it has something to do with like self-reference. <laughs> it has to do with these beautiful quantifiers. First order logic, the quantifiers range over things, range over constants. Um, in second order logic, you can quantify over predicates. Can you, you can say things like, for all p, p of x. So like x is like 
everything. <laughs> it's wet, it's dry, it's rough, it's sandy, it's tired, it's hungry, it's purple. It's like every, <laughs> you can say stuff like that. Um, nobody that I know of deals with second order logic, but it does exist. People, there are people who get excited about it. Um, AI people tend not to get excited about it because it's not, uh, I don't think it's decidable. Um, Oh, look at all the great things you can say. There, for all people, it is raining and not there exists an umbrella holding person umbrella. I think there's an implication here somewhere. It implies is wet person. If it's raining and the person, and there doesn't exist an umbrella that the person's holding, the person is not holding an umbrella, then the person gets wet. Wow, like I, that's the kind of thing you can imagine wanting to write down. Like that's like, so useful to know. Um, so take out a piece of paper and write these things down. First order logic. You got a few. We got a few minutes till class is over. You have to make decisions, knowledge engineering decisions, just like you had to do with the unicorn example. Like how are you going to represent these things? Nathan. Yeah. I think person was lowercase, which meant it's a variable. Okay. Anything that's got a quantifier right next to it is a variable. Like person right there, that's lowercase, that's a variable. So there's variables and there's things. Yeah. Okay. Variables? What can variables do? Variables uh, let you talk about lots of things, let you generalize over things. So you can say, for all people is wet person. I can just talk about all things just at once, which is handy. Here I can even talk about a thing I don't even know what it is. Not there exists an umbrella. There is no umbrella that that person is holding. I don't even know who those different things are, but I'm just quantifying over them. All UNH students work hard. I can say that even if I don't have particular UNH students in mind. There are no constants. Yeah. In that first example, John loves Mary, I suggest you make John and Mary both constants. We haven't talked about the semantics of first order logic, what any of this means, or anything. We're just going on intuition at this point. Yeah. I admire your desire to actually understand what's going on. <laughs> but at the moment, I want to see you just manipulate the syntax. OK. Who's got something for number one here? Lee, what do you got? Uh, so, okay, so I guess I would, so, so who's, who wants, uh, Adam, you thought you might have something for this. Loves John Mary. Yeah. It's always tricky to figure out whether to put John first or Mary first. You really need API documentation for these predicates. <laughs> I, I totally agree. So you could have, like, for all X yeah. loves X Mary. That means Mary is loved by everyone, <coughs> including herself. I did that, but I dropped and for everybody, for everybody. And I just put John. There exists a John that loves Mary. Yeah. You can't have, can have a constant just floating out here. Okay. You can't have that. No. Because a sentence has a truth value. Sentence is true or false. Um, when we're asserting that this is true, we're asserting that this is true. You can't just assert John. You have to say, um, like, exists John. Now you have to put a predicate around it. The predicate takes the thing to a truth value. Okay, well, what was the second sentence? Uh, who's got something for the second one? Yeah, Jeff, uh, what was it? 
Okay, for all crow, for all crows is black crow. What's wrong with that? So crow, so you named this variable crow, but just because you know what a crow is doesn't mean your freaking computer does. Well, that means that everything is a crow and everything is black. Yes, excellent. This is what you want because it, it we're making a claim about blackness only of the things for which is crow is already true. Okay, good. Oh, my stupid example. Sorry about that. Misleading young minds. Uh, one more. What's the next one? Dylan. For all X uh, is dolphin X implies is mammal X and lives in X uh, water. Lives in X water, where water is some constant. Yeah, you might want to put parens about, around that. Dolphins are mammals that live in the water. Looks good to me. 